Hi, friends. Well, last week's uh, little trial run at just strolling around the garden and talking seemed to be very well received. Thank you so much for your feedback on that. So I am going to do my best to keep this a regular thing until you guys start telling me you are not interested. Um, it is cold out today. It's like 42 degrees, not feeling remotely springy. And there's a pretty strong west wind, so it's also not warm. Here's Dorothy behind me. We just got back from a walk, Dorothy. She's looking a little drooly. A um, couple of things. Remember how I said last week that one of the reasons I wanted to start doing these videos was because a lot of times our videos I never get around to editing. Well, I've just decided I'm already throwing out one. So I'm going to update you first on what that project was about. Uh, and I'll show you some new plant acquisitions. So first, the project that I was working on uh, two weeks ago now, uh, but hasn't gotten any further yet, was preparing to pull out the metal edging that's along this path. So I've been moving. I've had to push all the soil out of the way. All of this metal edging was installed in 2011. When, I'm thinking if that's right, when I redid this whole area. And um, it, had, it did really well for a while, but it started kind of popping out of the ground. And then there are places where it was run over and compacted into the grass. And I think those two things, gravel has sort of worked underneath it. So it hasn't looked good for a while. I don't care to see you know, big edges sticking out. So all of this metal edging is coming out. New stuff is going in. I have had the metal edging for this project for more than a year sitting in my garage because that is how much I don't want to do this project. It just seems like a big pain in the butt. So uh, I'm just going to have to buckle down and get it done. It's going to look so much better when it's finished. And then I'm going to clean out this path. I have a really found a really good tool that is very satisfying. I keep kind of picking away at it because it just feels good to do it. So let me show you what's between these steps. So this path originally was supposed was all gravel in between the steps. Well, you know how this works, right? Like weeds come no matter what you put underneath it, no matter how you prepare a path, weeds will come. And I, for a long time, I was able to manage them pretty well with um, the weed torch, but it's gotten really bad in the past couple of years, which is actually better that it's like, there's a lot of grass in there. So I am going to clean out between all of these stones and we're going to re-gravel this, which will look so nice. I know that some people really love the look of um, some sort of steppable between paths. I tried that for many years, by the way. I tried every kind of ground covery thing that you're supposed to grow. I tried um, sanguinina, um, Irish moss. I tried every kind of creeping rosemary and creeping thyme and creeping everything. Nothing works when you have to walk on a path in winter. And this is a well-trodden path and uh, compacted, wet, cold, and then shovel on top of it, nothing works. So that's why I decided to just stick with gravel here. Okay, let's just uh, get to, oh, here, I did just come back from the nursery. So I went down to Northwind Perennial Farm, that's in Burlington, Wisconsin, kind of by Burlington, Wisconsin. Um, that's, Nor that's Roy Diblick's nursery. Um, I didn't get a chance to see Roy, and I just found out that Austin Eishite, who I did a video with last year, was also there at the same time. Austin's like, I swear to God, almost seven feet tall. I did talk to him though, or got a message from him. He said he was actually in the back with Roy, actually down by the farm where they're growing plants. So I missed him. I don't, I don't get to go down there. So um, I was just shopping. And then I talked to um, Colleen, who's Roy's co-owner there, because I am extraordinarily excited to tell you that I am going to be designing a garden at Northwind. It is, um, I am so excited for it. It is such an incredible compliment that Roy would trust me, Roy and Colleen would trust me to do something there. Um, it's a little patch, it's gonna be annuals. It's very cottagey annuals. Uh, many of which I'm kind of growing, I'll get some there. I'm gonna be doing a presentation on that and planting that on June 9th. I think it's at 10.30 in the morning, Sunday, June 9th. So if you're around in the neighborhood, that's when that is happening. Um, I will put some, uh, either a picture or a little video that I took up on the screen here so you can see the area that I'm planting. It's basically 
in a little fenced in area and it's just one quadrant of it. So I think it's basically 20 by 10. There's a few hydrangeas in there and like a Baptisia, a couple other things that are gonna stay, but the rest we're gonna work in and I'm so excited for that. Okay, here's what I bought today. Um, I think I showed you these plants last week. These little ones here are from Diggy and Dog. They've not gotten in the ground yet, obviously. The rest of these bigger plants are what I picked up at Northwind today. Now, Northwind doesn't put tags in their plants. They just have a big sign. So you have to take a picture of the sign so you remember. So this is, do I, did I take a picture of this? Which Achillea this is? Let's see. Um, I think I did. This is Desert Eve Terracotta Achillea. Um, I really, how did I spend so many years hating these and now I love them? Um, Limonium latifolium right here, this broadleaf, this is sea lavender. I picked up two Salvia wisawees, um, which is just to fill in an area where I'm making a couple of changes. I got two um, Epimediums rubra. This is Nepeta subsessilis Neptune, which I looked everywhere for last year, and then here it is at Northwind. Uh, this is a, a perennial geranium called Magnifica. I'm gonna put that along the path by the woodsy area where last week I told you that path was getting a little wide. And then this is a woodland phlox here. It's a little blue woodland phlox. I thought that was quite restrained, but I'll be going down to Northwind several times this spring, so I'm sure that will be more coming home. Um, okay, let's just walk around. I'm going to show you a couple interesting plants. This lovely gold thing coming up right here is a tansy. Now, steal yourself because I know we got some people who have trauma with tansy. This one is called Isla Gold. Um, because it's this gold chartreuse color, it doesn't, it's not as rampant at all as the tansies that can go wild on you. Um, there's less chlorophyll in these leaves, so it's, it's restrained. Um, so anyway, I like it here, it's popping up. Um, I think there were three plant, plants originally. I think this is plant one, plant two. There's plant three, has always done better than the others. The allium foliage has gotten so much bigger this week. Tiny Tough Stuff Hydrangea is starting to put on some some leaves. Now, interestingly, remember when I was pruning these, and well, if you watch, I said some of these might stems might be dead, but we're going to wait. So like this one, I can see now is dead, but I didn't know for sure. And some of these look like they might be dead. Like this stem kind of looks like it might be dead, but look, there's a bud there. So I'll still wait. I can cut out that foliage anytime. Uh, I think I showed you this last week. This is uh, Kinsley's Ghost Honeysuckle, which is really starting to get some foliage going on it now. And pretty soon those vines, I can see, you can see they're kind of popping out already. I will have to keep twining those around. And all of the foliage that you see in here right now, this is all Virginia bluebells, which at this rate, I would think should open this week if we get some warm weather because they are all budded up. Um, I planted some containers over the week. Here's this one. Now this snapdragon looks sad right here. He got broken, but I just, these are all plants from uh, Home Depot. Of course, the ranunculus is just the star here. Isn't that gorgeous? It's there, we got, so we have violas, pansies, snapdragons, ranunculus, and then the fantail willow left over from the winter containers. Look, I haven't even cleaned up. That's the rest of the, the sticks that I have to clean up. So, uh, just really pretty. It's going to get cold tonight, so I'm probably going to cover this just to be safe. Um, the chives have grown probably, they're probably twice as tall as they were last week when you saw them. And I could not remember the name of this bulb last week, Crown Imperial Fertillery and they are about to open up and really looking good. They did so well over winter this year. They do smell a little skunky. I mean, not like you want to avoid the area, but I notice it. So those are quite pretty. The, I think you can see like dots of yellow throughout. Most of the daffodils all sort of came out this week. So, and look at that beautiful hellebore right there. That one's, I, I have no idea what one that is. Uh, I think this one is part of the Spanish, There's a, there was a series, I think. I don't know. Anyway, it's 
pretty, pretty bad about remembering the names of some of these things that come in. Um, this, did I point this out last week? That leaf is creeping bellflower. Sometimes I like to avoid looking at it. But anyway, you can see that most of the daffodils have opened up this week. So that's pretty, pretty amazing. Some of these, when I replant, when I replanted this area last year, um, not last year, in 2020, excuse me. When I replanted this area, a lot of daffodils got sacrificed in the process and then I planted new daffodils and I just picked like two or three varieties. But a lot of the varieties that had been here, like the one in the middle of the path here, did continue to come up even though they'd been sort of badly damaged in the process of building this garden. So as I look at this side, we talked about the blue shag, eastern pine. God, look at this side of it. I, I think this, more and more I'm starting to think I just need to find a replacement because this doesn't look like something that's going to grow out of that. I don't know what the heck happened there. By the way, you might notice I've done nothing in the garden since last week, so that's a whole thing. Marsh marigolds are open and bigger than they were last week. There's one little stick of forsythia over there from the forsythia that I continue to cut back, so I don't really want it. I've been waiting for my comfrey to pop up because I need to get some cuttings to some people. But there is comfrey in here and I don't see it. And I, I don't think that could be it right there or that could be a burr. <laughs> Unclear, but there should be, there's like five or six comfrey plants in here. And they're being a little pokey to come up so I can get some to some people who are waiting for some. You saw the vegetable garden this week. I don't think there's much to show. Not a lot has happened since then. Let's just swing over here. I've not been over here since last weekend. Last weekend maybe was the peak. I don't know. It still looks, it's still looking. Oh, look at this. Oh my God, they're so cute. Look at the little snake's head fritillaries have started opening up here. Are those snake's head, those are, no, that's a different kind of fertility because this is the snake's head right here. The little checkerboard one. Oh, so much fun to just, but look, look at this. I don't know what happened here. Why is that area so bald? Did I forget to plant it? I don't know. I better take some pictures so I can fill that area in. But. Um, what I'm not seeing yet is any of the species tulips. I still have not seen any species tulips come up. So presumably those are still on their way, although they are up in many other places around here. Oh, here's a little species tulip. A very, very little one right there. Well, it's just fun to come over here and see what's, see what's up. I want to take you on the other side of this path so I can talk to you about what's happening over here. Oh gosh, look at the purple flame iris. Isn't that, it doesn't keep that purple color all year, but oh my gosh, is that just gorgeous. Uh, here's some May apples popping up. Now there's May apples all through here, but here's what they look like when they start coming up. Okay, so we talked about this garden last year, or last week, excuse me. But right here is the beautiful tricolor beach. It's doing so well, I'm so happy with it. Behind it, we've got kind of a wall, which was at one point intentional. Right here is a, is it Golden Century? I think it's gold. It's a, I can't remember which one it is. It's a ginkgo and it's supposed to be like a, it's a tree form that grows all the way from the bottom to the top. It's supposed to be very narrow and columnar, but we had, when we had a tree taken down many years ago across the way, it fell on top of it when it was young. So it lost its top. So I had to 
train a branch to become the new leader. And it's a little bent out of shape. I, I'm okay with it. It's sort of Seussian and I'm okay with that. But you can see, I think that this, it kind of moves off this way. For a while I was pruning it. Now I'm just kind of leaving it. It's fine. But what we have here and here is, oh gosh, now this is where I never remember. Oh, hang on. I think there's a tag. It is. There's a tag. How do I still have a tag? Because, oh, okay. This is Orandago viburnum right here. Gets these beautiful flowers, probably 10 feet tall now. Gets these gorgeous flowers bought in a four inch pot many years ago. And the reason they were planted, I hope I don't lose the audio here. The, sometimes I have audio interference from the Wi-Fi out the window. The reason I planted them here years ago is because I didn't want to see that over there. There was nothing but weeds and the mound over there. So I was creating a block here. Well, now I don't need that because it's pretty. So I'm trying to decide what to do. I'm, I love those viburnums. They're great growers. I think they're way too established to successfully even remotely think about transplanting them somewhere. I do think the tricolor beach needs to be the focus here. I think the ginkgo is weird, but worth saving. So I am thinking, we'll let them bloom and everything, and just think about this this year. But I'm thinking about removing these viburnums. Now I could just try pruning them like a lot. Clearly they want to be tall and upright. I could try pruning them and keeping them at four feet and see what happens because I don't think that, did I say moving them? Moving them is not an option. It, there's no way I'm going to dig those out in any sort of manageable form. So we have to think about that. This is Arixa japonica, uh, a weird little thing that I picked up at San Spiro Nursery years ago. Extraordinarily deer resistant. These are the little uh, leaf buds on it. It's tiny little flowers that are insignificant. Shiny leaves that kind of smell a little bit like lime. It's a fun plant. It takes to pruning very well. And now that I'm looking at it, I feel like I should have taken to pruning it um, quite a bit because it's, it's gotten quite tall again. Um, so I don't think I'll do that this year. I think I'll just wait um, this year because the time to do that is not really now. As I walk through this path here, one of my very favorite spring plants is here. This is Hylomechan japonica. A uh, plant I learned about on Margaret Roach's blog that I adore and have spread out a little bit. It grows really well from division. It's really the only way it'll move. Um, actually, the biggest one was over here, and I'm not seeing it. I wonder if I didn't lose that through some mismanagement. But there's some, I mean, it's kind of now I've sort of divided it into smaller chunks. It looks a little bit like this terrible invasive thing. Is it celadine? poppy or the other thing um, that's quite invasive. It's not that. It's a Japanese woodland poppy and it's not invasive at all. And if you ever see it, you should buy it. I have a lot of hydrangeas planted over here. And I have to tell you, I am not seeing a lot of life over here in those. And those were hydrangeas that I planted primarily in fall. And I am getting the impression that this is not an area where hydrangeas want to be planted in fall because I am, everything looks like it's struggling, which is a shame. There's some really nice ones in there. Um, it was not a tough winter and I did a really, I, you know, I really kept up on watering them going into winter. It's, it's interesting. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, oh, we'll do it when I, well, I should talk about it now. Let's walk over by the tree that everyone had questions on. As we walk by, look at this beautiful little thelictrum coming up. I think it's rhodochitin, maybe. I'm sorry, we've trodden this way already, but I'm sure we'll find something else interesting on the way there, other than the dead blue shag pine. Okay, this tree, which I was making, oh, is it windy? Which I was making heavy weather about last week. This is Cornus moss. It is the Cornelian cherry dogwood. 
I must have had marbles in my mouth last week when I was saying the name of that because a lot of people asked what it was and I was not coming out correctly. So it's um, Cornus, C-O-R-N-U-S, new word, Moss, M-A-S, Cornelian Cherry Dogwood. That's what that is. Sorry for being a mumble month. Mum a mumble mouth about it. And the fact that I mumbled that is classic. Turn it around again. We're gonna make our way. These, everything's looking so good over here. I was doing some weeding yesterday, but um, lots of good, nice buds on everything. I'm looking forward to seeing the ever, what the evergreens do. I wanna see, I wanna see some new growth on those evergreens. This is the Dutzia, which is really leafing out. And Kodiak, I think I got Kodiak red. Kodiak red, um, bush honeysuckle. Lots of leaves on those two. Here is the other pot that I made, which was mostly from the leftovers of that. I mean, again, in spring, I don't care what it looks like. I just want to see something. Um, the sun is not out, so nothing is really showing its face, but here's my little patch of double bloodroot, um, which looks so much better when it's open, but uh, multiplex is the variety of the double. And then throughout here, there should be more of it. I think it's just because this, oh, there's mostly over here. These are the singles, but, and there's a whole bunch of singles back there, but you can't see them because they don't open up unless the sun is out. Some pulmonary I planted last year is is blooming. Nutty little guys. Boy, I gotta get in there and weed. Okay, let's go check out the greenhouses. These greenhouses went up last week, minutes after I finished filming that video last week. So, in here are all of the dahlias that I overwintered, which I divided. And, oh, it's so much better in here. Which I divided and potted up last week. Now they were all sprouted, so I put them straight in here. I figure it's warmer out here than it was where they were stored last winter. Everything, I don't see any shoots coming up yet, but they were all sprouted, so I think we're all good to go on this. Um, and a few, a few things have been moved out here. The sweet peas, really, the sweet peas could be could and should be getting planted out here. I, I'm sort of waiting to see more roots on the bottom, but it's it's time for them to be going out here soon. So as soon as I get a little time, we'll plant those out. This is um, Amelia Coccinia Irish Poet, which is just growing gangbusters. This is pretty cold tolerant, so that's why I moved it out here right away. Snapdragons, Foxglove. Perpetually, always slower than I wish they were. These, oh, they need some water too. Those snapdragons will be happier once I get them out. In fact, I'm gonna close the door because that's how close it, cold it is here. And then I just have the strawberries that I planted up after I made that video last week. So these are the little pots of strawberries that I planted up. Um, and my intention for these is that I'll put these in some containers or in other places in the garden, but I wanted a few to be able to, to do that. And lots more of the Virginia bluebells coming up all over. This patch is actually starting to come into flower here. And if we would ever get some, I'm complaining about the weather perpetually here, sorry. But you can see they're starting to open up here. So cute. Here's a uh, tree peony. Can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but looking all kind of crazy. Oh God, is that bed a mess? <gasps> oh no, look. Did you see that? <gasps> Who is the bugger doing that? And what's bad about that is that, in addition to the fact that they're eating it. It looks like there's a lot of soil disturbance there. And I think that's June, which is one of my favorites. Hmm. 
Looks like we better deal with that situation. I feel like these garden walks are as good for me as as good for me as they are for you because I'm certainly seeing things in the garden I wouldn't see otherwise. Okay, that is it. I got a bunch of things I got to get done before I run out the door here to do something. So that is where we're going to leave it today. Thank you for watching. Thanks for rolling along on these weird, unscripted, mostly unedited videos. That's what's happening here. Hope you guys are having a good day in your garden. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Uh, just an FYI, I am filming. Man, I got so many videos to film, so much going on. So with any luck, there's going to be a whole bunch of videos this week. But, you know, I say that. I say that with a asterisk next to it because sometimes that does, I'm also on deadline at work this week. So maybe next week. <laughs> but I'm filming a lot. So that counts for something. All right. Catch you soon. Bye, everybody.